So hello everybody, it is Monday, so it's time for another Power Query video. In this Power Query video, I'm going to show you how to do a conditional merge. In this particular example, I can actually do it with a normal merge, and that's what we're going to start with, but then I will show you how to do conditional merge. I start with the normal merge first because we will see the table together and we see how things work. Oh, you'll see in a second. Just let's get started. Okay, guys, so this is the example. I have a table with energy usage that it gets set in the middle of the month and then I have a table of prices by month that it gets set in the beginning of the month and if we want to do calculations for this so we want to we want to know the price for that specific date for date for that date right so you can do this in DAX I'll show you how to do it in DAX without doing merging power query but this technique is quite cool for other reasons so I'll go to show you anyhow um, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you this, the easiest way or the normal merge. So what we're going to do is, let me duplicate these. And what we're going to do is go to home merge queries and then pick the price table. What we need to do is because these dates don't match, we can't have a normal merge. The normal merge is like the left outer or the right outer. I have actually a video explaining all the joins linked up below. So we, because the, there's not going to be a match, probably, we can't do a normal merge. What we're going to do is to do a full outer merge. Because that will pick all rows from the table usage and all rows for the table uh, the price and put it together. And if there is no match, it will just add rows. You will see it just in a second. Let me show you. I'm going to actually put the date in there so you can see. So you can see because there are no matching dates that both tables get added like that. They probably wonder, okay, what do you do with this? Well, we can very easily add a custom column that says if the usage date is empty, then pick the date from the pricing table. Otherwise, give me the date from the usage table. So we now have a complete column with dates. And in order to make some sense of this, what we need to do is first, we don't need these two anymore. I'm going to leave them there just for the second example. We're just going to sort these. You see, and now you can see that this is the pricing and this is the usage. So if we do a fill down on the cost column, we will actually get fill down. We will actually get, you see, this date this is the cost and this is the usage this date this is the cost and this is the usage in there right so this is a normal merge but i think conditional merge is actually very useful in other cases and this is, is easy to explain with this example so let me show you what we need to do in order to do our conditional merge is says that if the usage state is less is bigger than the pricing date then get this number so if this is less than this then we're going to get we say if this is less than the pricing table this is going to give us this line but if this is less than the pricing table it's going to give us two rows and then three rows i'll show you now we're going to do the conditional merge i'm going to show you how to do it like visually right so you can see what's going on so we have our pricing table we're going to reference to that we have our price table and then what we want to do is that this has to be date has to be less than so before the date that is on the usage table. I'm going to pick any date and then we will change it here. So if we pick February, it's going to pick just the 21st, like we predicted in here, it's going to pick this. If it is March, it's going to have two lines because there are two prices that are less than. You see them here. So this price is less than this date and this price is less than this date. So what we need to pick is the 18th. 
if we go in here and I put the, we're obviously going to automatize this in just a second, you get this. So we always want to have the latest prices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort these the other way, and then we're going to grab these. Okay, so now we have the number that we want. To get now this, um, to move this into the usage table, we're going to create a function. So let me show you. This is function for price. Get a good name. Advanced editor. And then instead of me feeding this date manually, we're going to have the usage table feed that date. So we're going to get here and create the variable for the function, which is going to be usage date as uh, date and then in here we're going to change the hard coded value for the part the variable that we just created usage date okay done and now we're going to go to our usage table and we're going to apply this function so this is the usage state that we're going to feed to our function so we're going to go to transform no add column invoke function and then we're going to grab that in here so the column to feed is the date the usage date and there you have it it works beautiful now i don't know actually i haven't tested if this is faster than a normal merge if you have a big table and you test it please let us know it would be quite interesting to know i don't know but it's a cool solution when you need to do uh, conditional merges and as you can see it's actually fairly easy to use i'm going to show you on friday which is was going to be my you know last week's fridays but unfortunately i i got a food poison i was like very very sick for the entire weekend so i'm going to show you that video this friday so if i am mentioned about this video well you know this video has already come out where we, we would do this in uh, the hacks in, in a very easy way also so in this case probably you're better off doing it with DAX. so i will see you again on tomorrow no on wednesday <laughs> not part of your video until then just again i hope you enjoyed this video